Uh, well, there's some little ones in there too, some little bits of beef. I'm going to have to keep that. Yeah, they say as soon as you see a bell blow like that, the inner from going from the outer, it's total heat. A lot of the guys are having issues with uh, the 850 belts, you know, sure. on the skidoos and all that. Absolutely. Uh, one of our biggest issues that we have is that we're in the backcountry, we blow a belt and uh, we slap a new belt on it and then it's full pin on a brand new belt and everybody says, don't do that, you're going to blow yep. that belt, it's not broken in. You, what? you will get a, a measurable increase in life if you give a belt a little bit of, bit of a break in. Um, it doesn't have to be 100 kilometers. Um, you could get you can get most of the effect in a very short time. It's really, it's about the heat cycle. You want to get that belt up to 120 C and then let it cool fully down. Um, whether you do that for two miles or 20 miles, doesn't really matter a whole heck of a lot. It's, it's about putting it on. It, it's a good idea when you buy a belt, if you can, let the kid ride around the yard for a little bit, get it warm, throw it in, and then when you break one, you're ready to go. Yes, yes. Okay, so now, so what do you do with Ultimax? Are you, are you a salesperson with Ultimax? No, I'm the engineer for, for all of Ultimax. Okay, so you know what you're talking about. You, you, should, you should know what you're talking about. Uh, so, uh, what can you tell me about these belts? So, so for my, oh, sled belts are over there. Uh, I've got a Polaris 800 Axis. Uh, what's your best belt for that? Well, that's the be XS. Our, our XS, yep. Yeah. Uh, XS is um, a little different in that it's a it's a high temperature compound so it's a lot better for places where you're really putting the screws to it um, the only downside to the excess is that it will it's more aggressive so it might pull your rpm down if you're up at an elevation or whatever um, so we always tell people when you first switch to excess from oe it's a good idea to watch your rpm you may need to take a couple grams out but it's a it's a great belt yeah no we've heard that before when we're looking at belts and the way that they're made, I love talking to belt guys and, and stuff about this, and the way they're made, a lot of times when these belts do go, it's this, uh, it's this top layer, it seems to delaminate. Uh, what, what's that caused by? Well, all right, here's, here's how the, the clutch works. You know, squeezes it like this. Well, what tends to happen, you'll, you can have up to 3,000 pounds of hub load pulling on this. So if you can picture, you try to hold this, I'm going to pull on it with 3,000 pounds. What's going to happen? I'm going to have to squeeze it really hard. When I squeeze it really hard, it's going to want to dish like this, right? Puts a ton of stress right there at the cord line. You know, the cord line is the strength. Really, when it comes to the belt, all that matters is the cord. You know, that's what transmits the, the load, is that, that uh, Kevlar cord in there. The rubber is just there to support the cord and keep it all flat so it does its job. So it, it, it's, it almost always fails at or near the cord line because that's where all the magic happens. That's the stress point. Okay, well why not put that cord throughout the whole darn thing? <laughs> right up to the rib. I guess you can't. You can only have one cord line, otherwise that's they right. fight themselves going around the... Uh, going around yes, that makes It'll run hot, hot. If you, even if, the, if this cord line, a lot of times where your heat comes from is this cord line. You've got all these cords in here, they're running this way, right? If they start to do this, so you get multiple cord lines going on, it'll build heat in a hurry, which kind of feeds on itself, and before long, it yeah. all just comes apart. Yeah, well, well we, when I see that the belt is starting to go, a lot of times I can hear when a belt's gonna go now. Oh yeah. I'll hear a little click, 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 yeah, you know, yeah. and I don't wait till it explodes all over the place. It's because that's when things get real messy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you'll see where the rubber's actually melting to the to the sheaves. Yeah, it's yeah, even the, black the marks on Black there. stuff on there. Yeah. Yeah. It can happen once once it starts going and starts slipping. Yeah. It's about well, done. You know, a lot of this, uh, we've got a high, per, well, not a high performance. We've got like a 180 horsepower, 170 horsepower, 2003 snowmobile that we we did try to our best to destroy it all winter long. We go crazy. We've got an Ultimax belt on there uh, for the last about five years. Good. Never lost a belt on that. But on a really good day of powder riding, I can blow a belt on my Polaris, uh, or uh, you know, good two days. Yeah, two days of riding, man. There's, there is something to uh, the individual vehicle being set up to yeah. a particular belt. You know, that's yeah. that's the. Well, I think it's motor mounts and you know the alignment of clutches. I'm still working on that. And, and getting the, the clutching so that it's friendly to that type of belt. Whenever you change from one manufacturer of a belt or one type of belt to another, the frictional characteristics change. You would be amazed what that does to belt tension and things like that. You can, and you can't feel that from the seat. You know, you think 
people put it on there, they, they think they can feel it. If we put it on a dyno and we actually are measuring hub load and things like that, um, you can see hundreds of pounds difference in hub load just because of different frictional characteristics. So if you knew what was going on with the sled, you could dial that in to get the yeah. hub loads down where they need to be and you'd get a lot more belt life. So sometimes, you know, maybe that skidoo happens to like the, the more aggressive belt than the Polaris didn't. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, yeah. Very interesting. Well, thanks very much for your time. Yeah. Much appreciated. Uh, warranty, warranty on the belts. Can you, can you tell me about the warranty on the belts? We have a warranty on the belts. Okay, oh. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> on snow belts? Yeah. Okay, snow, it's the it's year across the board. Um, we've changed our warranty program this year. Everybody else has where you have to cut the little card out in the back yes. and then you find the belt pieces and you get a money order and you ship it off and you hope that one shows up and in the meantime you can't ride because you don't have a belt so you have to go buy another belt in which case we'll just point the warranty. Um, what we do now is you just take a picture of the belt, upload it, and usually within 48 hours we send you a belt with tracking info. What? So if you blow it this weekend, you're riding next weekend, you don't have to go buy another one to carry you through. That's outstanding. We made it really easy to do because we want people to know we stand behind the belt. Yeah, that's excellent. That is excellent. Well, there you go. You, you are more of a salesman than what you think. I've <laughs> <laughs> been doing this way yeah, too yeah. long. So where are you from? <laughs> Springfield, Missouri. It's where we make all the belts. Ah, okay. They're all made in the U.S. Yeah, nice and warm enough for you here today? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Loving it. <thanks. laughs>